The western long-beaked echidna is an egg-laying mammal. Unlike the short-beaked echidna, which eats ants and termites, the long-beaked species eats earthworms. It is the largest extant monotreme. Its preferred habitats are alpine meadow and humid montane forests. The species is listed as critically endangered. Numbers have decreased due to human activities including habitat loss and hunting. The long-beaked echidna is considered a delicacy, and although commercial hunting of the species has been banned by the Indonesian and Papua New Guinean governments, traditional hunting is permitted. Sir David's long-beaked echidna is not a social animal, and comes together with its own kind only once a year, in July, to mate. The female will lay the eggs after about eight days, and the babies will stay in the mother's pouch for around eight weeks or until their spines develop. The creature is nocturnal, and can roll up into a spiny ball when it feels threatened, somewhat in the manner of a hedgehog. The diet of this hardy animal consists of earthworms, termites, insect larvae and ants. This animal is so high in the endangered species list that local Little is known about the New Guinea big-eared bat, as it is rarely encountered. Based on its large ears, however, it is hypothesized that it might hunt for insect prey using low-intensity echolocation. It possibly captures prey by gleaning, which means plucking them off of a surface rather than aerial pursuit. Due to its imperiled status, it is identified by the Alliance for Zero Extinction as a species in danger of imminent extinction. The northern glider is a species of marsupial in the family Petoridae. It is endemic to Papua New Guinea, becoming known to science in 1981 after being discovered in the Torricelli Mountains. This species has been found in primary, mid-montane tropical moist forests. It is also known from rural gardens close to forest. The northern glider is critically endangered because its occurrence is less than 100 square kilometers, all individuals are located within a single area, and a continuing decline of its habitat quality due to deforestation and human encroachment. They also face a major threat from hunting. The black-spotted couscouses are primarily arboreal, they only descend to the ground periodically. Being nocturnal creatures, they rest in a curled position on high branches throughout the day. Naturally, they are sluggish creatures with predominantly solitary lifestyles. Feeding and nesting is performed individually. Interactions and encounters between individuals of this species typically involve aggression. The expansion of human populations has led to the conversion from forestry to cultivated land for agricultural purposes. For instance, there has been an influx of Javan people into Papua New Guinea, which destroys the habitats of the black-spotted couscouses and contributes to their decline. The black-spotted couscous has been classified as critically endangered since 2010. The population of this species is drastically declining due to human disruptions. The main threat to the black-spotted couscous is overhunting. Due to its large size in comparison to other marsupials, it is frequently hunted for its meat. In addition, its dense, colorful fur makes it favorable for capes and headwear. The existence of the black-spotted couscous in a limited environment makes it an easy hunting target. Unlike other tree kangaroos, tenkiles are mainly herbivores, their known diet comprises tree leaves, ferns, and soft vines. They have been known to look for their food either in the treetops or on the ground. They have not been known to be hostile to humans and usually stay away from human activity while they are up in the trees. The tenkiel is believed to be the most intelligent of all tree kangaroo species. The culture of the residents of the Papua New Guinea towards the tenkiel has changed, the consumption of rabbits, fish and imported meat with the consumption of the tenkiel. As stated above, the tenkiel faces extinction due to hunting, mainly hunting for its meat. This change has led to a decrease in the hunting of the tenkiel for over 10 years. The golden-mantled tree kangaroo has a chestnut-brown short coat with a pale belly. A double golden stripe runs down its back. The tail is long and has pale rings. Its appearance is similar to the closely related Goodfellows tree kangaroo. It differs from the latter by having a pinkish or lighter. Colored face, golden shoulders, white ears and smaller size. Some authorities consider the golden-mantled tree kangaroo as a subspecies of Goodfellow's tree kangaroo. It is considered to be one of the most endangered of all tree kangaroos. It has been extirpated from most of its original range. It has been listed as a critically endangered species since 2015.
The black Dorcopsis is believed to be mainly nocturnal but may move around during the day in dense forest. It feeds on leaves, grasses, fruit and roots which it gathers with its mouth and manipulates with its four paws. A young black Dorcopsis develops in its mother's pouch. There are four nipples in the pouch despite the fact that there is normally only a single juvenile developing there at any one time. It spends most of the year in oak forests where there is little undergrowth but the ground is carpeted with mosses, lichens and ferns. It descends seasonally to gullies and lower ground at which time it is vulnerable to being hunted. The montane forest is being degraded using slash and burn techniques and is eventually being converted into grassland. The northern river shark has a stocky body with a high back. The head is wide and flattened, with a broadly rounded snout and minute eyes equipped with nictitating membranes. Each nostril is divided into a very large incurrent opening and a small excurrent opening by a triangular skin flap. With its slender teeth, small eyes, and high density of ampullae of Lorenzini, the northern river shark seems to be adapted for hunting fish in conditions of poor visibility. In Doctor's Creek, Sharks may move to and from favored feeding areas with the tide. It appears to be extremely rare, though more subpopulations may remain to be discovered in Australia and Papua New Guinea. Based on present information, no more than 250 mature individuals are estimated to exist in the wild, with no more than 50 in any particular subpopulation. This species is caught legally and illegally by commercial fisheries using long lines and gill nets, as well as by recreational fishers, habitat degradation may pose a further threat to its survival. The regent honeyeater feeds primarily on nectar from eucalyptus and mistletoe species, and to a lesser extent on insects and their honeydew. It also feeds on both native and cultivated fruit. It is commonly considered a flagship species within its range, with the efforts going into its conservation having positive effects on many other species that share its habitat. The 2019-2020 fires would likely push the species closer to extinction, with only about 250 of the species left in the wild at that time. The mountain pygmy possum is a small rodent-like marsupial. The mountain pygmy possum has an average weight of approximately 45 grams. It is endemic to the alpine regions of southern Australia. They are nocturnal creatures, preferring to sleep during the day and forage at night. While all other members of the family Buramiidae are arboreal, the mountain pygmy possum is a terrestrial species. The preferred habitat of these pygmy possums is within deep boulder fields in alpine regions of southern Australia. The biggest threats to the mountain pygmy possum populations include habitat destruction and fragmentation, climate change, predation by feral cats and red foxes, and threats to their prime food source, the bogong moth. The construction of ski resorts in the alpine regions in which the mountain pygmy possums inhabit has been one of the greatest factors attributed to population decline. The western ringtail is confined to southwestern Western Australia where it is now reduced to patches of mainly eucalypt forest. The distribution range has contracted by over 90% since the colonial settlement of the region in the early 19th century, corresponding to the greatly altered ecology in Australia's mammalian extinction event, and the diminishing abundance has been especially noted in the few historical surveys of the southwest Australia's mammals. It uses tree hollows and builds drays for shelter in tree canopies, their nest-like dray is an assemblage of shredded bark, twigs and leaves. They are primarily arboreal, but will move through understory or open ground to feed or gain shelter when the tree canopy is unconnected. The western ringtail has declined in abundance and range because of habitat destruction and predation by fox introduced from Europe in the early 20th century. Current threats include ongoing habitat loss and predation by introduced species. Altered fire regimes have had significant impact on many groups, high-intensity fires remove suitable refuge and large burns can clear an area of food, causing starvation. The northern hairy-nosed wombat is nocturnal, living underground in networks of burrows. They avoid coming above ground during harsh weather, as their burrows maintain a constant humidity and temperature. They have been known to share burrows with up to 10 individuals, equally divided by sex. 
In general, all species of wombat are heavily built, with large heads and short, powerful legs. They have strong claws to dig their burrows, where they live much of the time. Threats to the northern hairy-nosed wombat include small population size, predation, competition for food, disease, floods, droughts, wildfires, and habitat loss. Its small, highly localized population makes the species especially vulnerable to natural disasters. Wild dogs are the wombat's primary predator. As well, rabbits and the actions of landowners have contributed to the decline of these wombats. The necessity to control rabbits through methods that do not harm wombats can combat wombat decline.